This is my old gas-powered crucible furnace. It's a very simple design made from a small propane cylinder. I built it many years ago and use it for melting aluminium. The lining is made from a mixture of perlite and fire cement. It's held up well, but is now starting to crumble. The lid just sits on top and has a long rod welded to it to act as a handle. But my main reason for replacing it is that now I just need something bigger. This is a helium tank for party balloons. These are disposable, so it's quite easy to find empty ones for free. The bottom has three small feet pressed into it, but it's not very stable. I'll need to build a proper stand for it. This will become a safety hole to let molten metal run out of the bottom of the furnace in case a crucible breaks inside. Because helium is inert, it's safe to grind the tank open like this. Never do this with any cylinder that once contained flammable gas, even if you think it's empty. Rather than weld the tank permanently to the frame, I'm welding nuts on so it can be detached. This tube will support the lid, which is raised on a rod that passes through it. You may have seen this pedal bin type of arrangement before. It's based on a well-known design from a book by David Gingery. The pedal is pressed to raise the lid up, which is then swung out of the way by hand. I'm going to put my own twist on this design. Before welding the tube to the frame, I'm going to cut this upside down J-shaped slot into it. I first rough it out on the milling machine. And then file by hand. The handles are held to the top of the tank by four small spot welds. They're easy to see and drill out from the inside.
This steel rod will attach to the lid and fit inside the tube on the frame. When the pedal is pressed, it will lift the rod and the lid. This bolt will slide in the slot in the tube. This hole in the base will be for the gas burner. For the furnace lining, I'm going to use ceramic blanket around the outside with a castable refractory layer inside, the total thickness being about 50 millimeters, and the base will be solid castable refractory. Before pouring the base, I fitted this 3D printed pattern into the safety hole. It will produce a drain channel with a hole in the center. I let this dry overnight before the next stage. This is the ceramic blanket. It's the biosoluble type, but I'm still wearing gloves and a respirator when working with it. It cuts easily with a sharp knife. Both the refractory material and the blanket are easy to find online. The ceramic fiber is held in place in the lid with wires. The twisted loops provide a key for the refractory that will go on top. I also put bolts around the hole to provide extra hold for the refractory. I made a form from cardboard and plywood discs for the interior. and also plugged the burner hole with cardboard before pouring the refractory inside. After 24 hours, I removed the cardboard forms. I added a bolt to the end of the push rod so I can fine tune its length.
The height and position of the lid can be fine tuned with two grub screws. Now I can finally test the action of the lid. The last thing to do before use is to cure the lining by firing it slowly. The burner is set at its lowest. If you'd like to build your own furnace based on this design, plans for it are on my Patreon page.